studied this video is to help figure out how to do the kinetic and potential energy work for my class. The first thing I want to direct you to is once you're in my class, you'll see that I've got the purple energy force emotion unit two folder right here. It's at the very top. Go ahead and click into that. Once you've clicked into that, it'll load right up. And then you'll see that I have the assignment from last week that you should have finished by Friday and submitted. So if you haven't done that already, do it. And then I've got the notes that we were working on as of last week that you can also get done. Um, we just finished those today. We also have our energy PowerPoint that we've been learning from right here. You can click on that and see all the cool stuff in there. And then I've got this kinetic and potential energy simulation. Once I click on that, it's going to open up. I can then upload this to my OneDrive or download this to my computer and work on it there. If you do download it to your computer, just remember when it's time to submit the assignment that you re-upload the assignment to Schoology. I'm going to include my name, today's date, and the class period right up here. Then I'm going to go ahead and answer each of these questions. So let's look at our learning goals. Predict the kinetic potential energy of objects. Yeah, we've just been learning about kinetic potential energy. Examine how kinetic and potential energy interact with each other. Okay, that sounds fun, Mr. Sawchuck. In the space provided, define the following words. Kinetic energy. Well, I know that kinetic energy is the energy an object has due to its motion, so I would put that in there. Potential energy. Well, looking at my notes, I know that potential energy is the energy that's stored in an object based on its position. Then I've got these instructions. Open Google Chrome. From Schoology, click the Potential and Kinetic Energy State Park link. Oh look, it's right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. Bloop. Once I click on it, this is going to open up. I'm going to go to the Basics page where it says Intro. Now from here, I'm just going to follow what the instructions say. So I can see on this page, it says start with the skater at the top of the track. Draw or write what happens to the skater. So it says position of skater at the very top of the track. So I'm going to take the skater, put him at the very top of the track, and let go. Whee! 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 Okay. So now I'm going to write down the result of what happened with the skater. What did we just see him do? We just saw him going back and forth. That's pretty neat. And then you're going to put in the possible reason why you think it happened. Why do you think that our skater, when started at the top, dropped down to the bottom, and went all the way back up to the other top again? Why do you think that is a thing? Next, I'm going to click on the thing that says bar graph. Well, where can I find that on the screen? Oh, right up here, where it says bar graph. I'm going to click on the bar graph. Now that I've clicked on the bar graph, I can see that I've got kinetic energy and potential energy thermal energy and total energy. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now what? Run the skater through the track again. Use this tool to help you label the spots on the ramp where the KE and PE are greatest. Hey class, what does KE stand for? Kinetic energy. Excellent. What does PE stand for? Potential energy. Excellent. Best audience money can buy right here in the room. And we're going to label our results below. So if I'm writing, I could write where the KE and the PE are the highest on the track right here, or I could type that in this little box down here. So what's the relationship between PE and the height of the skater on the track? Well, we already know now that PE is potential energy. So let's go ahead and pause the skater at the very top. What do we see about the potential energy? Is it very high or very low? That's in the and middle, kind of. then you're going to write down your observation in this first box right here. Okay? Now, let's go to the next idea, and let's see what happens when the skater is at the very bottom. All right? At the bottom, is the potential energy very high or very low? It's pretty low. That's right. So then, look, boom, right there at the bottom. Oops, get back on there. Then I've got a classic right here, the law of conservation of energy. Energy can't be created or destroyed, just transfers from one thing to another, which we are seeing here, right? We're, we're seeing 
energy go from kinetic to potential and potential to kinetic. Watch what happens to the kinetic energy, Ke, as the skater moves faster and slower on the track. He's the slowest at the top of the track just before he reverses direction and fast at the bottom of the bend. I don't know, is that true? Let's see. Push play. Can I push speedometer? That sounds like a cool thing to push. Okay. Yep, looks like he's going the fastest at the very bottom of the track and the slowest at the very top of the track. So what's the relationship between Ke and the speed of the skater on the track? I'm going to write that in. What's the relationship between kinetic energy and the speed of the skater? Next, I've got watching the bar graph. What general statement can you make about the relationship between Ke and Pe? So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to let you all type in or write in what your relationship is that you see between kinetic energy and potential energy. What do we see happening there? While you're doing that, I'm going to get a sip of coffee. Okay. So I've got my kinetic and my potential energy. I put my relationship down on the paper. So I'm putting down um, generally what I notice between the kinetic and the potential energy. If you need to look one more time, you can see what those two are doing. By the way, if you don't have this pulled up, you can always pull it up by going to fet.colorado.edu, I think. I'll include the link in the description for this video so that everybody can find it really easy. Next, I've got the effect of starting height on PE and KE. Drag and drop skater halfway up the track. Draw or write what happened to the skater. Okay, that sounds pretty fun. So I'm going to go ahead and just pause because I know I can't catch that skater. I'm going to put him halfway on the track. Okay, there's about halfway. I'm going to push play. Huh, that's interesting. Now I'm going to put my results in that results box right there. Draw right what happened to the skater. Ouch. What do you notice about the bar graph now compared to when the skater started higher up on the track? Well, what do we see? Is this bar graph as high or is it a little bit lower? It's a little bit lower, isn't it? Let's not drop our iPads. That's always the worst thing. Now the whole internet knows that you did. Oh, man. Okay, the next thing, we're going to click Playground at the bottom of the page. From here, you're going to make your own and follow these steps and these instructions. I'm going to go ahead and stop part one of our video.